<laughs> oh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Vaginal Fantasy. This is a romance book club where me and my three co-hosts every month discuss a romance book of the genre type. It's kind of, you know, like books like Twilight or uh, Laurel K. Hamilton or other things, maybe with some butt sex, because this month is about the butt sex. Why do we always think in Twilight? We've never read Twilight. Huh? No, I know. I just it's the layman's term for a vet. You know, it's the layman, okay. like Dinner. easy entry into vet vaginal. Easy fantasy. entry. <laughs> oh, boy. Guys, this is going to be a night. Let me just tell you because of many reasons. Um, but let me You're introduce. Welcome. My, let me introduce my co-host first. This is this is Kyla Caseby with the beautiful hair. Aw, thank you. Hi. How, how you doing, Kyla? I'm all right. You know, my back's broken, but that's cool. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs their back? No one. How is it broken? Oh, I, it's degenerative disc disease and bulging discs and uh, some other nerve pinching things and other crap. <laughs> Sorry. Just, just pretend you're free to call it. It'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Well, God, no, that would be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I know what happened to her, and uh, I, I will not complain. That's a lot of drama rama. Yeah. Um, and then we also have uh, Bonnie Burton. Hello. How are you and Sophie? Be, I will be drinking straight from the bottle because I can't find my wine glass. So I, I posted an image of Anderson Cooper drinking straight from wine bottle, and so I'm continuing the theme. Okay. Oh, Kyla, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, uh, I have, uh, like, whiskey. Um, the Great whiskey? Best, no, the best whiskey that you can find. Oh, from, from, the, whiskey. from the bottle. No, <laughs> and it's soda. Uh -oh. <laughs> Whiskey and soda. That's, that's a lot of whiskey. If that's a whole thing, of whiskey. <laughs> no, it's mostly soda. <laughs> and I'm drinking. I'm drinking Bex Riesling. All right. And uh, Veronica Belmont, our third amazing co-host. Hello. What is cold? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. So I'm drinking Wawa. You drinking Wawa? Just Wawa. Oh. I'm. Uh, okay, so I'll be less fun tonight. It's okay. I feel I'm. I'm actually. I actually came down with something after the last convention. I got some Concred. Yeah, me and too. I, I'm drinking some water, but I'm also going to be eating a uh, zazang, which is a special Zang? gourmet candy bar. What? It's a zazang, and it looks like something that maybe thematically would be good for this hangout. Oh, oh hey! Oh, hey! Oh, hey! Oh, hey! Oh, hey! Oh, hey! Oh, guys. Okay, before we get into the book, let's do a shout out. So, around the world, we have people who are part of our club, Vaginal Fantasy, and they read the book on their own or on their own hangout and or in person. So, I give a local shout out to all the people who met the month before and will which will be um this month Beers, Books and Boobs had their second annual wine weekend in Lansing, Michigan. That sounds like a lot of fun, guys. Mm -hmm. Um Cloudy with a Chance of Clitlit met in Seattle, Washington at Third Place Books. Ladies of the Great Lakes met at Lily Seafood in Royal Oaks, Michigan. Um, the Mellow Roses of Texas met in Fort Worth at the Sherlock's Pub. Shameless in St. Louis met in uh, St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri at the Stone Spiral Coffee House. The Yearning Yenzers met in Pitts Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Abbey on Butler. The Only Lovers Let in the Library met in Puerto Rico in a Google Hangout. Mm. Uh, books, bo beer, books, booze, and board games met in London at the Stromgoom Bar. Vaginesis met in the U.S. in a Google Hangout. And the Cleft of the Shadow, the WoW Guild, um, met in Area 52. They always meet one hour before and during the Vaginal Fantasy Hangout. So I guess they watch and they play WoW at the same time. So if you want to join up, oh, uh, cool. get, get in there. So those are this I month. hit 110 finally. You did? I hit 110. I did. I did. Legion's really good, isn't it? That's what it's they say. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. But I have no one to hang out with now. So my guild is always off doing cool stuff. Oh. I don't have enough cool gear to do the cool stuff. So you need to. Cool. You need some low levels to, to hang out with. Yeah. Right? Mm. I need some lame ass other one tens who don't have any cool gear. Well, I mean, to do that'd stuff be, with. Anyway, that'd another be me. another talk for another day. That'd be me. I don't have any things. Well. I don't even. I'm nothing. I don't know, even know how to play. Wow, I'm the worst. No, you're not. You're the best. Okay. <laughs> So, okay, anybody else have anything to say before we get into this book? Uh, I brought a prop. <laughs> oh, really? What's well, your I prop, Ronnie? A giant uh, penis pillow. <laughs> that is big. And mm -hmm. I know I got the tip wrong, but I got tired of looking at dick pics to get it right. So, uh, it's for a hanging, low hanging balls. It's for uh, 
It's for a naughty craft book book proposal that I did a while ago. And anyways, do your balls hang low. Do they wobble too? Do it, bro. Okay, you tell me they're not getting out of the book and you throw them over your shoulder like a fountain and hold them under your arms. Hang low. So Sophie likes Sophie likes to sleep. My dog Sophie likes to sleep on the balls. So I just put that. I mean, they are the soft part. Yeah, they are. They're very They're very cushy. Anyway, oh boy, I ruined everything. Oh, I have something to say if you're if you're not if you're yeah. done. Uh, I also brought a penis. <laughs> I feel like wow. this this is my penis. It's a penis shaped somewhat. Come on, you guys know. Look, this is you know BB8 is clearly it's more like a butt plug. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really? butt plug. It's definitely yeah. more butt plug. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I love him. And he rolls. <laughs> There's too much going on on this in this thing. Kind of like that book. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's too much, too many flavors, too many flavors. Well, you're well, you're welcome again for that. Welcome. Okay. okay. <laughs> so let's get into the book, guys. Uh, Bonnie, do you have it? Oh, we have the cover. Okay. Ooh. Shadow Seduction: Immortals After Dark, Number Seventeen, The Dacians, Number Two. I don't understand what the deal with that is. It okay? Oh, I, I can explain that. Okay, good. You can explain it. Great. In the scorching Immortals After Dark, Dacian novel Number One. Cresley Cole brings together a wicked vampire bit prince used to getting everything he desires and a demon warrior who always felt like an outcast. A knight of de debauchery. Prince Mercio Daciano and his new friend Caspian the Tracker calm the streets of Dacia drunkenly seeking out pleasures of the flesh. In what should have been a typical night, they coax a bevy of nymphs to bed to impress their females. Females! <laughs> the demon and their vampire kiss on a dare changes them forever. <laughs> Once they finally break away from their soul-searing kiss, they find themselves alone and shaken. Had they imagined their explosive chemistry, obstacles ranging from a death sentence to exile in a war-torn dimension, threaten to destroy their lives, and the vulnerable promise in that one kiss. How long can they resist the fire that blazes between them? Even if Mercio can accept Caspian as his fate of mate, the seductive vampire still must convince the stubborn demon that their bond is forever. And any royal Dacian union must receive the blessing of King Lothair, an unpre unpredictable and savage killer. You almost said unpregnable, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He is unpregnable. So, um, Kyla, please explain the Dacians number two versus the Immortal After Dark. Okay. And then can you just explain why you picked the book and what you thought of it? Sure. Take the okay. take it. All right. Okay, so first of all, I always pronounce it Dacians, but I'm not saying that's the right way to pronounce it. I'm sure it is. Pronounce it. <laughs> but, um, okay, so what they are is they're, they're vampires, right? They're the oldest of vampires. Um, um, they actually were made by the gods, um, all, uh, all the vampires. And, but the Dacians or Dacians, uh, they don't drink blood. That is that has been their thing. They do not drink from humans. They don't. Um, okay. And then when they do, if they do, of course they get kicked out or killed. Um, but they also, you know, are exiled. Um, but they also, their eyes turn blood red and um, they become kind of frenzied, supposedly. But uh, Lothair, who has his own book, um, that's that's the one where he looks like. Um, um, uh, what's his face? Owen Wilson. Mm. <laughs> so Lothair is he's, he's a nut job, but you know, he's been kind of tamed by this woman that he fell in love with. Anyways, he becomes prince of the Dacians. He uh, does drink human blood because he just drinks it from his mate. And so he's changing those rules for, for the vampires, mm -hmm. the vampires. And, uh, and, um, and so, so that's the rule that it's still kind of, but it's like in flux. It still hasn't quite been accepted by everybody. And didn't in, we read, we read one of these, right? Or like we did. from we another, did. I don't like, remember, I remember which him. one. I was like, they were talking to one of the characters, the one who made yeah. all the weapons. Yes. yes. I know her. Yes. Bettina. Bettina. Yeah. And Bettina. She's in this, and she's in this and one. She's in this. Yeah. Yes. Because she's the sister of, of, uh, Caspian. One of yes, of Caspian. Yes. Yeah, she's the one who one. married Lothair. Which mm -hmm. was, yeah, that was a good book. I kind of like that book, actually. I like, I remember liking that book. Yeah, yeah and she's because she was all like, and nobody liked her, even though she was mm -hmm. like super cool. Yeah. And then she, you know, like found her 
her mission. She's like super great at 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 uh, making these amazing weapons out of um, any kind of metal. So metallurgy, really, but weapons. Um, so so this is so that's why I chose it because I've I've been reading these. She and Gina Showalter, um, Cressley Cole and Gina Showalter, they they exist. They're these Lords of the Underworld and stuff. These books, they all exist kind of in the same realm. They'll cross over sometimes. Um, I and, said the wrong dude. She he didn't marry Lothar. Thank you, Summer, and everybody else who corrected oh, me. You. She married yes. Trahan. She Tra married Trahan, oh, yes. not Lothar. Yes, and so there's there's a whole bitter feud between Trahan and um, the Caspi one of, Caspi uh, yeah, yes, because Caspian was like her. Uh, he, friend, he was, her best friend, right? Best, he was her best yeah. friend, but Bestie. she wasn't. She was in love with him forever, and then that's the book that we read. And then she realized that you know he wasn't into her and stuff. And anyway, so so they had this whole thing because he like almost Trahan almost killed her. Blah 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 blah. This all sounded really interesting because we'd been to this world before. I've been like deeply steeped in this world, but also because I just started reading it one night, and I was like, holy crap. This is going to be a dude on dude thing, which neither of them have ever done before. Mm. Neither mm. Gene Showalter or Cressley Coles have had a, um, a male on male or a female. They talked about it, you know, in the past, like that that's accepted and and that there are other people in the things, but they've never made a whole a, a book surrounding them. Mm -hmm. and, and so I was like, this is great. This is they're finally, you know, they're breaking new ground. And I don't know that we've ever read anything this porny and, and, <laughs> nope. and this, uh, you know, much about, you know, male love. And it's cause it's not just sex, it's love too. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, you know, we're always making the joke about, you know, you're mine. Well, they both say it. Which I think <laughs> is really funny. <laughs> Because they're both. Oh, that is so, funny. That anyways, is funny. I just, I liked it. I thought that that was interesting and I thought that would be different for us. And I thought it would like push people's boundaries. And also, I just, um, I, I don't know. I just wanted to read about the male porn. That was good. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was a good, I think it was a good pick for the group. I think it's good to do the different things, and everyone's always complaining that we don't pick sexy times. Well, you got it. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to go. I do like this world. I've read several of the books, and I did remember that Patina girl, and I was like, I enjoyed that book. It was cheesy, but I really enjoyed it. I've read several others in this series. This one, to me was a little bit, it, it came in, it came in with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little off-putting, and I, I'm going to say some words that I've never said out loud during this hangout because they were in the book so much. Mm -hmm. The word, I can't barely say, the word pre-cum. <laughs> Why haven't you said pre-cum before? Oh, I don't <laughs> think we've had cause to. Are we gonna have I don't think it's back? been written 5,000 times in a book before, <laughs> Kyla. We're going to have to bring back the Felicia Day blush a meter oh yeah. look at her <laughs> i just can't yeah. even with that word i just read it and i shuddered i sh i was so i wanted to take uh, all the baby wipes that i have and just wipe the book all over it was so yeah this, there was so much can't, can't everywhere you can't felicia yeah. those things are expensive oh they're leather <laughs> pants they're jeans i know i should no, be I mean, more I water mean, wipes i, I mean use water wipes, wipes. Um, i do i know i use water wipes, wipes. those are very expensive they are. I just use the organic ones. You could have like laminated the cover and you. <laughs> Guys, I just don't know. I was so distracted by the graphic. I mean, there was. I have some. I have some. I've been. I've been to, over the course. I'm going to read some of these like short things that I pulled up. Even over the smells of hot springs and sex, Mercia Mercio caught a thread of Caspian's natural scent, a heady blend that called to mind raindrops and leather. Yeah, that was that yeah. was pretty funny. I remember that. That was one. pretty good. I remember oh, that. Oh, although this one, here's another one. We still have our pants on with a hint of amusement in his eyes, the vampire said, though mine are filled with semen. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, I just could not get over that. Even though I think the characters could have been more fun, I just kind of skimmed it because 
Every time I came to a centaur or nymph orgy, I was just like, I liked the one where they they just like they're wandering through the town, like one is chasing after the other one. I think like I think Marseo is like chasing after Caspian, and they like wander through this room, and there's like a centaur with a saddle yes. on, and the saddle yeah. has a dick on it, and the nymph is riding the dick saddle, and the centaur is also having sex with the other nymph. I was like, that's an image I haven't ever <laughs> thought of before. <laughs> I've never thought of that putting a dick on the saddle that is on the centaur that is also having sex with someone else. Well, it seems like a lot. There's it's another scene. Going on. There was another scene where Caspian, like, she he pulls two. Basically, just everyone's just like a, a sex slave in this book. So he's just like, "You two women, come with me." And then he's thinking about Merceo in the other room, who has two other women with him. And then he's taking so long thinking about them, the girls kind of shrug and just do start start doing sixty nine. Yeah, yeah they're they're like, oh, they got <laughs> bored without you, so now they're just taking care of business. Well, good for them. Good. I don't right. know. Yeah, good. Well, and the one good thing is that in these books, it's like the nymphs are, are clearly drawn out as that they're sexual and this is all their choice. It's not, there's no yeah. spell on them. This is just who they are. It's like they just know where the good parties are. And so they just head there. And that's like yeah. what they're into on a any night, on a Tuesday. They're not sex slaves. They're just sex aficionados. Yeah. Yeah. And they get the, the good intel if you read any of the other books. Mm. People will go to them for for, for the intel and yeah. the dining. Okay, and it both. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I don't. I I would say that it was hard for me to read it, but I would. I'm not in a state of mind where I had to read something that graphic with the mm -hmm. word with with that much fluid. It it really there was so much fluid. So much fluid. And that was my. So you know, it wasn't my favorite. It was more porn than I would have probably wanted to consume on my own. But thank you, Kyla, for picking a bold choice. Okay, Veronica. Okay. I had, I like Felicia literally like text, text messaged me and was like this book. And I was like, I think this is my permission that I don't have to keep reading this book anymore. Aww. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was, it was like, I started reading. I was like, Oh yeah, this is good. Okay. I'm into this. Like, this is fun. And then I had to read it on an airplane and I'm like, <laughs> I'm physically uncomfortable right now. Like this is bad. And I just, it, it just got like, I got to the part where they kind of consummate their relationship like fully and I'm like okay I feel like I'm good now like I feel like I don't know if they can go with past all the that. oil the oils that he brought the oil, the special oil? yeah special oils so and all that detail. stuff I'm like this is very sexy and romantic and I'm happy they found each other and I'm going to bid them adieu and move on to my less sexy novels yeah but I feel like I got my fill for a little while <laughs> Yeah. You got was, so did I he. got my fill. I got my fill. <laughs> um, oh, it was just like, oh, the, the Tamarani says there were like eight pages left in the book after that. I, was, I was around like 65%. I think yeah. there's still like a pretty good amount left. I checked. No, but pretty much nothing happens after 65%. Yeah. Like, you know, at that point, really? I, I think yeah. it's meant to become a series because it didn't have an ending, really. So well, The book actually ends at 80% for some reason. Really? Because yeah. it has oh. like an excerpt for the next book. That's 20% oh, right. of the book, which I'm like, what is that about? Did they ever have their baby? No, they, no, they, they didn't have their baby. Or is um, gonna? I, it I ended in the worst cliffhanger I've read in, <laughs> in existence. It basically was, was like, let's just end this book and start a new book, but not really end this book because basically his sister gets kidnapped or like sent to, you know, they have oh, to find her. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then okay. cliffhanger. Well, anyway, so it was it was just really intense. Like, I really did like the other book that we read from this world. And I think this one and it wasn't because it wasn't it, obviously I, like it, it was just gr very graphic. Yeah. And it was I think if it had been any kind of sex, it was just like too much, like page after page after page. The vampires breather are creamy seed. That's probably yeah. that really that actually really traumatized me because I was eating like a, uh, you know, like I was eating like a falafel at the Why time and there's taking the sauce. You're not supposed Dude. to eat while you read these books. No, I have an interesting question. I mean, this is interesting to me because I'm, I'm not saying this is true, but do you, do you think it's because, um, not, not because they're, they're men on men because we're all obviously it's like, yay. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, do you think it's just because male sex is, uh, or was in this book? It's uh, much more um, aggressive, and then yeah, there's a lot more 
spilling. See, there's a lot you know more it's stuff. There, I, totally get that. I had the same problem with flesh, though, too. Flesh really? also was like a similar kind of like the way the, the scenes were depicted, like so graphically. Like I could only handle it in like small doses. And I had a really hard time like finishing it. Like if I was in the mood for that kind of thing, like it was great because you didn't have to get very far <laughs> before you were encountering another sexy scene. Um, but it was the same. It wasn't because it wasn't because it was. Yeah, I don't think it was because of the kind. Maybe it was because of the kind of sex. I don't know. I, it's just there's so much. No, even if it was a girl on guy and he was creaming his seed all over her, like, like all over his pants. Yeah, I would be. I would want a, a white wet wipe at that point too. Yeah, I like yeah. M, M on M. Like I'm, I'm <laughs> totally down with that. Yeah. No, no, that's why I was just kind of wondering why, what, what the thing, like why it was so different than, you know, the graphic sex scenes between the men and the women. Yeah. I no, I, I think, think and I'm saying it's the same. Than, yeah. I think it's the level of the graphicness and yeah. not the, not the, the who is doing the what. I wonder yeah. if they think, I mean, I wonder if she just, she wrote it more graphically because she felt that men would want that i don't know hmm. yeah i don't know maybe Summer she, oh, says maybe that cole isn't afraid of fluids so many romance writers are maybe it's a natural part of it damn it which i understand true. i totally get that yeah. I maybe a little less fluid yeah okay well bonnie right. what do you think and then we'll get into our questions from the um, um from yeah the i would say stuff. there's a lot there's a lot more fluids in this book it's a lot more uh liquid based <laughs> I don't know what to say because like you i actually like reading guy on guy erotica i don't know why it's well just, i do too <laughs> it's hot for whatever reason i find it really sexy and this just felt really over the top and i was like am i getting crude ish like i was wondering if maybe uh i just wasn't used to like so much sex in a book after we've kind of had books lately in the last few months that aren't like bam Bam! Fluids everywhere. Bam! Yeah. <laughs> Dick saddle. Senator sex. Bam! Fluid. Maybe, maybe we've desensitized ourselves. Well, no, the other one. Maybe yeah, I think I just need more. I think we do need to build up. It's yeah. like like it's like a like a nice romantic relationship. Like you want like a, a nice yeah. build up, and then you yeah. get to the power stuff. And for me, this was just like, okay, we haven't really read much, and now like fluids. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm like, no. allergy fluid. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I, I, I agree with you. I missed sexual <laughs> tension. This wasn't sexual tension. This was like sexual damn burst. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. was like, everything's fine. Blah, 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 blah. I had your yeah. mind. Yeah. Like, I, I need I, your butthole. I've actually watched <laughs> gay, porn. gay porn has more backstory. <laughs> no pun intended. Maybe like, <laughs> I just said butthole. Backstory. <laughs> like, I, it was weird. It was like, I was reading this and I'm like, oh yeah, this is what erotic is like. I totally forgot. It's like a lot of sex and there's not a lot of world building. There's not a ton of character development. There's not. Oh, there's one book. I'm going to look it up actually that traumatized me. And it was a man and a woman. I'm going to look this up because that's the most beautiful cover you've ever seen. And I'm going to okay. find this book. I can't oh. remember the, the author. And I started reading it and I was horrible. Like it was this level of. <laughs> And I just couldn't go on. And I was like, let me you say, promised. Let, let me say this. Yeah. So Felicia, another Felicia in the forum, Felicia C says, I'll take fluids over penises being called love rods and vaginas being called flowers. Totally yeah. get that. But I think like, when I think about like books that had like super amazing sex stuff that I really loved, like Kushiel's Dart or like, you know, the yeah. kind of the sexual tension in Alona Andrews's books with like, you know, between Kate and, and uh, Curran and stuff like that. Like, I, I guess just personally, I like a little, like it can get like super steamy. I just need a little more like ramping up personally. Yeah. I need to, yeah. I feel like I need to ease into it. It's almost like the book itself needs a verbal lube, lube. You know, like, I feel like, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I feel like it, I would rather ease into it than just land on a dick. Like, I just, it felt like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It felt over like. Over and over again? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I need some buffer in there. I need some sort of ro more romance, more story, not just sex and then a couple pages and sex and fluids and sex. And I, I was wondering that. I'm like, oh my God, am I desensitized to erotica? Because. 
Oh, my dog's butt is in the air when I'm saying this. By yeah, way. yeah. She's like, hello. <laughs> oh, okay, guys, I found the book. I found the book. It's okay. called, what's the book? What's the book? It's, it's, called, called, dog. it's called Ghost Land, and it's by Jory Strong. And basically, it's a beautiful cover, but the other things that this author writes are extremely explicit sex. I did not know that. I just bought it for the cover. And then I get through in there, I'm like, what the? What? So I don't. <laughs> It's really explicit. So if you want a male, female, really explicit, traumatizing book, maybe you can look <laughs> into that author. But aside from that, I thought like I they did a lot of that back and forth that always drives me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kyla. What? I was I like that book. Oh, oh, you want that book? Okay. <laughs> I was like, happy we're like, no shame in that so, game. No, just if you could just send me the theme again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a be, beautiful please, cover. Please to be sending me that book. Please. Please. Oh, please. No, but I understand about that. Uh, and now I'm interrupting. I'm just saying, uh, I think a lot of people are, are going back to like soft porn and how like soft porn is like uh, better because there's not so much like right up front yeah. action. Yeah. Kind of the same thing. Anyways, I'm sorry, Veronica. I forgot. Okay. Oh, um, oh, damn. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's okay. Um, <laughs> nope, it's gone. It'll come back. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> All I'm right. Sorry. We really have a sorry. couple of it's questions. So we can we just talk generally? We have lots of good questions. Oh, oh, I remember. Okay. I remember. <laughs> Ka Caspian kept being like, like they kept doing that thing that always drives me nuts in romance books um, where it's like, oh, no you're you're not ready for this love i have to let set you free and maybe right. like, no no i love you no but maybe actually maybe i need a minute and they just like they they were like <laughs> they kept going back and forth so much yeah, like right? in the beginning i was like oh god you guys come on <laughs> yes you like each other we all know it come on and it, but but they were acting like teenagers and yet this is kind of my my problem okay i liked caspian as a character and i liked his backstory and he i really was digging a lot more than Mer mercio but he was it was like you're a millennium older than me man but they act like teenagers you know yeah. like oh you didn't call and like there's some amazing quotes from mercio like um well, well let me just read these because i really could not stand him at all uh, <laughs> see i liked I mean, him he was my favorite i didn't like caspian i liked Merce mercio really yeah, yeah. I I hated Caspian in his, the other books, like the one we read with Bettina. I hated him. I was like, what is your problem, dude? You're being a dick. I and then, such a dick. I know, Marcio now you get it. Was, but but Mercio was like, he was so into was himself. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. look at him, here's, here it is. Mercio, my gods, look at him. Mercio stared in awe. He's as magnificent as I am. No, let's see, he's funny. That's what I like about him. He's kind of like full of himself and he's like really kind of like, he's got a good sense of humor. Like I just thought he was, a, like I'd way more want to have hang out with him. I was about to say have sex with him, which is probably also true. <laughs> he would do it, he would do it. Lots of people are mere sexual. You are not alone. Mere <laughs> sexual? <laughs> I, I'm totally gonna, I'm gonna march in the parade with that. Yeah. March for mer sexual march for mer sexuals. Mer, mer pride. Mer pride. Mer, mer pride. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so oh, okay. So I was way, before you get into questions, I just want to remind people watching that they can uh, hashtag us vaginal fantasy or reply to vaginal fantasy as the discussion's going, and I'll retweet funny things. Okay. Good. Um, okay. So okay. So yeah, I was more ca team Caspian. You guys were more team Mercio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I was, team, I was team Caspian. Okay, good. Because I, so I, like, I liked that. Okay, so we're just split. We're two and two, which is exactly yeah, what they fine. want. Okay, Adrian mm -hmm. on the forum asks, did you want to see some of Caspian's time away, especially since he was gone so long? And what do you, yes. uh, what do you think? Of, okay, yes. <laughs> so basically, okay, this is what m made me so angry in this book. Like between a, a chapter and another chapter, he leaves for 500 years. For 500 years. And like nobody really notices, like he just kind of goes away for a little bit. And he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I was gone for 500 years and I was missing you. And then I <laughs> came back. You didn't even you, know girl, how much hold I, on. you didn't even know how much I was missing you and I really grew up in those five hundred years. <laughs> 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 it's like okay i guess if you claim you were gone for 500 years, years i guess i have to believe you uh. in, their, in their time span because they're immortal right yeah yeah so 500 years what would that be in mortal time though well i, I think like he went to a demon mortal. plane when you go to a demon plane 
This yeah. is all, this is science, guys. Yeah. When you go to a demon plane, then you then you uh, it's the t time works differently there. Okay. So, on a demon plane where he uh that sounds like a demon plane yeah, like, <laughs> he's around, is like wigging it's out like, on me like that Air like Force it was a different one. timeline like i get that it was a different timeline <laughs> no, I like know, i get like, it's 500 years like think of it as yeah. like you know like if you're immortal 500 years maybe that's like maybe five years to humans if you're immortal 500 years isn't like 500 years but what i'm joking about is that he didn't tell merceo that he was like gone there so merceo right. was just like oh hey where were you gone where, where were you all last week and like, yeah, I, texted you, I texted you where were you exactly i know that's back <laughs> Yes, oh, yes, like, phone, who dis? Uh, yeah, new phone, who dis? I block you. <laughs> like, I feel like if I was in that time, because I'm late to everything, so my being like an hour late, would that equal 100 years late? Like, would I be forgiven for being 100 years late to brunch? Or would it be like... <laughs> Demon think, plane man. I, think, I don't know. It, de it depends on the kind of brunch it was and how long that brunch lasted. Next brunch. Let's say the next brunch. <laughs> Stay on topic. Yeah. I was like, oh, wait, we were supposed to have brunch not in the demon plane? I've been waiting here for a thousand years for you. <laughs> Where are you? Where were you? Oh, I no, no, man. We were in the centaur plane. Like, I was there. I, I thought you were like half an hour late. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. Awesome. We were at the Benigans in the centaur plane, not the Benigans <laughs> in the demon plane. I had a table for us. It was it's in so the hard. open table invite, you guys. Yeah, you guys, so I'm calling from the table. table. I'm calling from the KFC combo centaur plane. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It's so sad. Oh, no, I want there to be a kid. You know how many mimosas a demon can drink in 500 years? <laughs> yeah, I know. That was very expensive. <laughs> it was expensive. I can't imagine that, Bill. But how okay. sad would it be if you were gone for 500 years and no one freaking noticed? I know. I know that's the sad part. Is oh, that, it's like, rent. literally. He's the only one who knew he was there. <laughs> it's true. Because like, hey, what's going like, on? Does it even count if you're the only one who knows you're in the demon plane? Like, no. <laughs> whatever. You grow a beard if you're in the demon plane. You can yeah, back, speak you a lot of languages. That's what. What if the uh, demon plane's overbooked? Do you get dragged out? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> Topical thing. Okay, I have another quote that I'd like to throw in before the next one. Cass, Cass heard the females whispering. Okay, this is, this is they're walking through a club and everyone's like, ooh. They're, and Cass heard the females whispering, Merceo's already been blooded. The demon and the vampire are mates. Would have loved to see their claiming to be the jam in that sandwich. Uh, that's, more, that's more marmalade than jam, to be honest. Not everyone likes jam. Yeah. No. I just feel like I should bring that up. Yeah, marmalade is really <laughs> iffy. A lot of people marmalade are not into it. I'm not into it. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Shailen, yeah. Shailen, Shailen from the forums asked, how do you feel about the ending, non-ending of this book as compared to the Falcon's cliffhanger? I can't decide if I'm more irritated by this one or just irritated that it ends well, at the 80% page count. Well, now I'm really glad that I didn't make it that far because I was so mad about the Falconer like cliffhanger. Like, yeah. were, were I to get two in a row, oh, I think man. I would have lost my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I think the forum was losing their mind. They were like, why can't we have a book with an ending? Yeah. <laughs> I think the book I'm picking has is a is a one off, so we should be okay. I feel okay. like the problem is is that these books they get like a following, and that's why they keep doing sequels and sequels and sequels, and so they have cliffhangers so they can continue. I don't know. I I, I thought that didn't it end eighty pages before the ending? Like I thought. <laughs> no, I know. It, it, both of them were equally egregious. Like I'm sorry, yeah. it's a novel. It's I not Falconer, and I still apologize that there's no Falcons in it. Like I'm still upset about that. that. You you couldn't have known. It was no, like it was clear. It, you couldn't have known. Nobody yeah. could have known. Now I I knew, and yet I still picked it <laughs> because mm -hmm. I am a jerk. Um, but yeah. I but I. I I just thought it was really interesting because it was it was uh, man. No, no, no. Man. We all had no, fun. No, clearly, you, you can't. We have all no, picked awful. Awful. <laughs> Like this is not an awful. Book. We have all picked <laughs> real. Like I've picked, picked worse. Before. Yes, we've all picked all worse. Like, uh, half the uh, point I, of the show. I have to say something really quick. Someone named um, Danielle Marie just tweeted, "This is my first time catching this live. I should join next week, so I'm not as lost." Trust me, it doesn't matter. You're yes. always going to be. <laughs> <laughs> we you should just Danielle, just drink. Yeah. We, and you'll be fine. Yeah, you yeah. just drink wine. 
that's all you just drink wine and watch us try to figure out books. That's basically, and sometimes we don't even talk about the books. So you're yeah. fine. Yeah. This one we're talking about because there's so much to talk about. Okay, next question. Tara says, I feel like we got all the story through exposition from dialogue. For example, the part where Cass and Mercier are talking about how Cass is meant to be his brother-in-law, but at the cost of being accepted into his land, and would have to deal with the many trials from his relatives, and then they're both excited about the idea. Cut to the next chapter being with, beginning with, sorry, that brother-in-law idea didn't work out. Yeah, that was so weird. <laughs> He's like, you're going to love my sister. And he's like, I am going to love your sister. This is going to be great. We're going to be brothers and best friends for life. And then, then literally the next page, like, well, no chemistry there. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? That seemed like a really great plan, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're going to see it happen and not happen. I know. That's yeah, cool. that was weird. I don't know what, I'm not sure what the deal was with this book. I remember when I was reading it, you know, in my bed, at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> the way you did. Kyla. Yes. <laughs> Under the covers. The uh -huh. glass of whiskey by my side. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I finished the chapter. Jesse, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm texting. Jesse, I know you're in the, I know you're in the middle of playing Madden. Get up here. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, no. Now Kyla's red. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, but I remember reading the end of it and I was like, what the, what the fuck, what the, what is going on? Why is this, this is not over. Hold on. And then I was like so tired that I was like, never mind. Aww. And then I put the thing down and then I fell asleep. And then the next day I like I picked it up and I was like, is there more? And nope. then I saw that there was nope. like something for another book, and actually it's mm. it's for Wicked Abyss, which I I, I have begun reading. So mm. everyone says that the next book was very book. good and it had I think an it's Wicked Abyss. I think that's what this was. Mm. All right. Sure. <laughs> Let's see. Next question. <laughs> This book seemed like a porn with story written around it more than a story with romance. What do you yeah. think best makes up or defines a good vaginal fantasy? I think I need like a little bit of, I think we've talked about this before. I just like it when there's like, when it's a book that has the romance and sex like really intertwined in a nice way where it feels like the book, you know, it's like an integral part of the story in like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm with you. I need more sexual tension. I don't yeah. want just they're having orgy every other page. Cause that's boring. I mean, that's like porn's boring without some sort of storyline. Even if it's outlandishly stupid, you at least need something or else. Do you? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes you maybe don't. Sometimes well, I, I pick up flesh and I'm just reading flesh for fleshy. Well, if you're just doing it for, you know, a <laughs> wank or a rub, then yeah. I guess. Isn't that the only reason much. you watch porn? I thought that was the only reason. Well, the writer watched. in me wants story. <laughs> So when I'm watching porn, I'm like, yeah, I could see that happening. Like a double D dude ranch and the guy is actually a cowboy and he, you do actually see them doing cowboy like things. And I'm like, yeah, I could. But if it's just sex with cowboy boots on, it's not really a story. So to me, I need something, at least some sort of story. So for this book, I wanted there to be a little bit more about their relationship, a little bit more about the backstory, mm -hmm. a little bit more, more. And so... Which yeah. is sad because I mean I'm usually the one that's saying I just want to read sex scenes and now I, mean, I enjoyed some of the book the the scenes where they're fighting and being bounty hunters more yeah. than any of the sex scenes. Yeah, that was yeah. like they were like that was fun and I liked how mm -hmm. they played off of each other. That's a really good point. I forgot about yeah. that when they were that going is... to get that wizard. That yeah, the wizard. Weird, that whole sequence weird. was awesome. Fucked up, drunk, drugged up wizard dude, which was so yeah. funny. Like, oh, look, this wasn't so hard after all. Um, but the uh, <laughs> like, the whole fight scene leading up to there was. This is how apparently in my mind they talk. By the way, because I've been doing this the whole episode. Oh, dude, yeah, they talk like, like we're dudes. This is we're doing stuff and doing it. But like that was fun because they were like they had like little quips and like Caspian was like looking out for him from Merceo mm -hmm. and Merceo was like you know doing his crazy like sword fighting and it was really cool. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I like that yeah, I thought that was cool. Like more of that would have been fun. Like some like the adventures of Merceo and Caspian. And oh, remember Swords Point? Yeah. Swords Point. And there was there's another. Uh, um, oh my god, there's it, it's by um, there's a whole s series about it's a male male and it, it's mostly fantasy and then it turns into a romance later. Um, it's oh god, what is it called? It starts with the L F or the initials of the author Lynn Fielding or something like that. Anyway, it's really good. It's like kind of Game of Thronesy, 
mm-hmm. but with a with a, a, mm. a famous sword fighter and a and a, like a younger ment younger pupil who's an apprentice and they they become he's not really young and they become a couple later mm. on it's really mm. good and that they, sounds really yeah there's lots of battles and stuff and if they had just had more sex in those that would have been a better version of this yeah they yeah. agree it's fun. fun and I would just yeah. like to to say that not, I'm not that I'm still defending anything because I totally agree with you about all of this um but that um, I was drunk. I just sounded like I was really drunk. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was moving my foot, and apparently I can't do that and talk at the same time. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, in in most of Cressley Cole's, and as I would like to say, especially Gina Showalter's books, they there's so much of uh, backstory and understanding of like this fact that they. The Ascension is coming, which happens every, I don't know, millennial or something. And it's, um, there's so much stuff about the lore and and other people that are brought into it. And it's so involved that you have to have like the thing where it's like a, almost like a dictionary at the back that explains everybody. Um, and that's, I didn't feel that in this book. I felt like this was like a, a one-off and it, and it wasn't explained very well and didn't yeah it didn't have the kind of backstory that the rest of them do even though i don't always love them i mean i like them a lot i've gotten used to their kind of goofy humor that isn't my humor but still kind of makes me happy you know um like how the valkyries are always playing video games and yelling at each other but they really love each other but they they just like eat popcorn even though they don't really need to eat like stuff like that um <laughs> I I like I like these books and there was none there was none of that in this book though. Yeah. Well whatever. I feel like there was more sword fighting than sword fighting, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's way more fun when they're all like out to get somebody and there's a mystery and stuff. And I feel like that mystery was the thing that was a cliffhanger, right? Yeah. Yeah. Although in, in the chat, everyone's asking for a hashtag dick saddle merchandise. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm getting a lot of tweets back from people saying, hey, porn's not boring. I'm like, I didn't say porn was boring. <laughs> so for all you pro porn people, that's not what I was saying. In fact, I just like porn that has a little bit more, you know, costumes. We all have, we all have stuff we like. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know. Yeah. I am definitely. Well, I think it's the more for this group in particular. As it, the, the question was, what makes a great vaginal fantasy? And I think the perfect. There's some perfect ones that we've read, like Crystal's Dart or that steampunk one we read. Where Iron it's Deep. like Iron, Iron Deep. Deep was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was. In Cthulhu great. Erotica, that had plenty of story. That was good. Yeah, that was story, but that also has sex That's in cool. it, yeah, so that, was... that people can't complain. There's no sex in this one. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Retro Noisette says, I know it was an important plot point in the story, but I can't help wonder how much talk of semen is too much talk of semen. <laughs> I think this book is an example of too much talk of semen. Did, we, did they have a lot of words that they were using up to say semen that weren't? Oh, yeah. Nope. Did they? Really? Because <laughs> that's always for that- me is when they try to find, I mean, not like the vagina flower thing that's a little old and No, old, but like. But I like the idea of like how many like, uh, por- not porny, but how many like, sexual euphemisms uh, for semen right yeah <laughs> and I didn't like know. like come like um like excitement lubrication <laughs> excitement or, lubrication um <laughs> uh oh, I mean, like, like culmination uh water maybe <laughs> the culmination <laughs> station <laughs> Milkshake waterfall. I don't yeah. know. Step into my culmination station. Yeah. <laughs> Step into it. Oh my yeah. god, my dog. What do you want, Sophie? He wants she to be on the cul- culmination. Do work for semen? Fluids. <laughs> no. 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 Um, no. You're gross. Just, Stop um, I don't know. Like, uh, just spend. Um, I've read that a lot in like Victorian stuff. Yeah, no, but I look at like yeah. you could. Everyone should at one point Google. As uh, like Victorian sex slang. Oh yeah, really funny. Like what they would say in books and stuff because they weren't allowed to say what they wanted to say. So you had to work around creatively. But this book wasn't working around creatively. It was just page after page of semen. Yeah, like, yeah, I just, yeah. I just like I just came all over your chest. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or I want to cover. Good thing your I chest. shave it, you know, or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I assume they do. I don't. <laughs> I, I think that you're right. It's like at no point did she try to name 
it in a flowery way. It was yeah, just right, dick, right. you know, raw. Which respect. Was just respect. Oh, yeah. There was no raw. <laughs> that's, <laughs> my, that's my name that I use on Reddit, Dick Cockrod. So it's, <laughs> how I, it's, how I get, it's how I get in there. I don't know. I feel like Senator Dick Saddle might be my new Reddit name. Senator Dick Saddle. <laughs> No, Caspian does not shave his chest because he had golden curling. And when, yeah. like, there's something about a guy with golden curling chest hair that's not that's not as sexy as dark. Do you, chest are hair, you, you know what I'm saying? For your sex heroes to I don't know. Fully... I don't know. I've, I've been I've been with some men with some. I always think of the guy who's the greatest American chest. hero when I think of like oh. Really oh. golden. That's my problem though as a child. I'm just like more of a golden like like mountain man, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. like hmm. Grizzly Adams. Yes. Oh, that's, okay, that's hard. Oh, except for that he hit on my grandma and he was really gross and drunk. So what? I have cool. problems with that. I thought that Edgar was gay. <laughs> no. Well, if he was, he was, he was. He was the doing was a thing where he was it? hiding it. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> doesn't surprise me. My grandma loves loved gay men. She loved them. So. I just yeah, I agree <laughs> with the furry chest thing. It's just it always it's a little weird. I mean, I'm a huge Tom Selleck fan and he has a hairy chest, so I don't know. I don't I like know. It there's all. something weird about the way they were describing it. There was like, <laughs> early, it, he was even talking about his lower hair, and I'm just like, I don't want to talk uh, about his lower hair. hair. No. Really? His yes. William Cat hair down there. <laughs> you, don't to, you don't want to talk about that? Really? Does that make you uncomfortable? I, yes, uh, clearly. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't I mean, make you uncomfortable. We don't really talk about dude pubes, and that's, that's they don't fully. All right, work. all right, okay. Here's the question then uh, shaven. Dude pubes are not shaven dude. I don't pubes. think they shaved them. Manicured. Oh, yeah, men do. Yes, just trimmed, please. Manicured. Manicured. Man manicured, yeah. Is, yeah. is nice. Is nice. Not, it's nice. It's not, not necessary, right? It's nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. I think it was, wasn't it in John Waters' film Female Trouble that the girl and guy couple both had dyed pubic hair different colors in different shapes? What? Thought, yeah, if girls do that, why don't guys do that more? I, I wouldn't. Know, like I so don't want work. that. I don't want that. No, thank you. I know that gay guys. Some gay guys do the like the jazzle, but it's like penis, so it's like pajazzle. So it's like they do the stones and glitter, stick on glitter, right by the balls. But oh, that's I, uncomfortable. I think that would be itchy. I don't know. It sounds I, really itchy, and, and it sounds like it could get into infection. Yeah. That's what I would think, or chafing, or some sort of like paper cut situation. So also, I, I mean, mm -hmm. balls are really sensitive to men. Like that's a very sensitive area. I know you don't want to put adhesives there, so I feel no. like maybe just <laughs> glitter. I don't know. Yeah, like just oh, just go in there and just like. Yeah, just <laughs> throw some glitter on it. Like out of your mouth. I feel like we did read something about <laughs> someone painting pubes pink or something. Yeah. Well, I know that the thing on Instagram with the millennials is armpit hair that's dyed unicorn colors. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so okay. The unicorn trend has gone too far. No, I don't like it. I'm so also, no. unicorns are not rainbows. Unicorns are like, if you look historically, they're just white horses. They're, they're white horses. horses. They have horns yeah. and then they're the only virgins can see them. Yeah. yeah. But I don't Alicia, understand. There's no unicorns, unicorns in history. <laughs> unicorns are in the Bible. So <laughs> historically, <laughs> in the unicorn Bible, they exist. Yeah, unicorn. Every time, you know when they do those those protesters, the religious just like historically, protesters. centaurs don't have dicks on their saddles. <laughs> <laughs> Bible, there is a centaur <laughs> section, which is the new, new unicorn Bible. Wait, wait, wait. It's not the unicorn Bible. It's actual Christian Bible has mention of unicorns many times. No, really? Yes. It's true. They really did think they were unicorns. They would bring, didn't we talk about this last time? They would bring home like narwhal horns and be like, yeah. this was a unicorn. And people were like, yeah. oh, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, if you ever want to freak out a Bible. Well, that's the only thing I like about the Bible. If you ever want to think, if you ever want to freak out a Bible thumper, that's like you know all the guys that protest outside of Comic Con with the Jesus saves. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they always like recite whatever hateful Bible verse they think works for them. I always yeah. recite the unicorn Bible verses, and it freaks them out. And those are in the Bible, so I mean, yeah. you can find lots of dirty shit in the Bible too. I mean, it's true. There's yeah, a it's Leviticus. True. If you really want some sexy times, read Leviticus. For sure. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to make you know. I don't want to make fun of anyone's real you know beliefs. 
but <laughs> come on, it's the, it's the oh god, the Bible. Come on, to the but, but you know, like, you know, like, like maybe there was a Jesus guy, and I don't know. Like, I don't anyways, know. that's their belief, and it's not mine. Here's well, but there's, mine. there's unicorns, so they had to be onto something. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that makes me kind of. Oh, curious. Here's the thing: I am totally <laughs> cool with the dude that can turn water into wine, and then everything else is up in the air. So that's yes. how I and I was raised. Catholic, then Christian, then yeah. So I mean, I, I I went to Catholic school until I got kicked out. So I mean, yeah, it's authorities, total authorities. <laughs> okay, guys, we have a question. I really want to go get to. Okay. They were actually okay. good. Okay, asexuals and how would you live your life? Okay, there's oh, two. There, yeah. There's two questions about asexuality. Okay. Um, Tace asks, how would you live your life if you were stuck in this particular fictional universe? I'm asking because this book made me feel more asexual than anything <laughs> I've ever read before. Um, and Stephanie said, I would like to grasp again the idea of asexuals because what do you think, how do you think asexuals would fit in a world based on losing virginity to a mate and spreading semen into somebody else? Yeah. So I think those are two really interesting questions because I was, I felt the same way. I was like how I was, in, this was the least sexy book. I was feeling like I would be sitting in the corner, like just maybe on my iPhone <laughs> while there's just like. <laughs> A, a, a centaur gangbang in the middle. I don't understand right. it. It's like, <laughs> Not it's my like style. Being, it's like being an introvert in an orgy. You know, what yeah, do you, I don't, don't want to, I'm not an orgy. Do so. you hang out at the catering table? Like, what do you, it's like, I feel, I feel bad too, because I mean, asexuality is a thing and it mm -hmm. doesn't exist. And a lot of people are, and there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. It's they even have a flag. There was a, there was somebody cosplaying Ca Castiel from uh, Supernatural and she had wings in a certain color. And I was like, oh, that's oh. a very interesting color conversation. She's like, it's the asexual flag, which I did not realize that they had a flag. So that's hmm. great. Except for the Castiel is not asexual. <laughs> well, I mean, well, it, I mean it, it was, was, a, mel it was a, <laughs> a melding of, of her own. You yeah, know, that's no, cool. I think that's, that's great. That's that's her interpretation. That's but amazing. that is a good question. Like, if you're in a world where everyone's just throwing yeah. soup around, like <laughs> Betty, how do you? Or what? Who who would their mate be? If you if yeah. there's a mate and you have to have sex with them in order to to survive, how would yes. an asexual Not operate in that world? Well, okay, okay, okay. I'd like to answer this because if they, <laughs> I, I know I've I've been drinking since five because we four maybe since we. <laughs> Because we House of Cards came out today, and so we've been binging it. And I was like, 4.30, I was like, uh, I'm having some whiskey. Um, but, <laughs> so, um, okay, so if we can imagine anything, we can imagine any kind of sexuality, um, then why can't we imagine a non-sexuality where you still have a mate? And mm -hmm. so in order for you to mate with them, maybe you mate with your mind. Oh, it's interesting. That or, would be a Presley Cole mind. I would want to read. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, I could see that. Or maybe you know? it's like you have, because I mean, this is like a magical world. So maybe you mate through magic as opposed to touching each other. Yeah. But would an asexual necessarily have to be paired with another asexual? Um, your mate would have to be another asexual and or or not you think because this whole book was about a two people who didn't think they were gay and they become they are gay in each in the context of each other they are gay but i don't think they were gay in relationships with other men outside I, each other correct that's the whole point of it this. was more an attraction yeah. to each other as opposed to attraction to the same sex exactly so okay. would asexuals be sexually attracted to each other in order to mate or the asexual would be consistently asexual and they would both be asexual and somehow they would mate without sexual intercourse? Well, in this world, it seems like people are, um, when once they like become, they realize they're mated, their, their um, affinity for whatever they had before disappears. Mm -hmm. So maybe in this universe, that's what would happen. So they would lose their, their, a their sexual, sexual drive. drive yeah and and they, they would gain one they would gain a sexual drive when it in the context of the mate their mate one or the other it would be like whichever you know mm -hmm. like and they maybe they would decide together but is that offensive know. is that offensive to asexuals to I portray don't them like that i don't know i would i don't know enough i don't know I enough don't, about i don't know either i'd like to know Maybe we should invite one of our friends who's an asexual that's cool about being outed as a, like, who's out already as an asexual onto the show as a guest 
Because I would love to know what they think of romance books in general. Like well, we'd have to, we'd have to get. I think up. we all know a few. But yeah, we know a few. You know, I'm just saying it's an interesting concept because I, I don't, I'm not asexual, but like I'm bisexual. But to me, I, I'm not attracted by gender. I'm attracted by person. So for me, it's not like, ooh, I could get with guys and girls. It's you have you yourself, you as a person, I have to be attracted to. Yeah. So that's how I view my sexuality, but everybody's kind of different with theirs. So hmm. I don't know. Anyway, well, if anybody wants to on Twitter answer, just go at Vaginal Fantasy and Bonnie can retweet your answers. Yes. Yeah. I'm really interested to hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody question. says there's an asexual romance book coming out that, that's getting a lot of buzz, but it's a YA. Well, we read YA. Yeah. We read them. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, well, that's it, guys. I guess we should, we can wrap it up now. Um, so, uh, Veronica has picked, unless if anybody has any parting words for this book. <laughs> I, the only parting words I have is I'm really glad that Kyla picked this book, one, because no one can complain in this book club that we have not had. <laughs> Sexy times. Sexy times. It's true. We make it up for it. Yeah. And second of all, it's nice to have like some same sex stories once in a while because we tend to just do the, you know, the usual guy on girl stuff or girl on guy stuff. And it's nice to mix it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also glad we threw some senator sex in there because it's been a while. So I, overall, this book was very fluid, but I enjoyed reading it just because it was kind of hysterical also to read. So thank you, Violet. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. You're welcome. And I also am sorry if I upset anyone with this <laughs> book. No, it was a good, I think it was a good choice, and we mixed it up, and um, it definitely get the sizzle meter up there, so we don't have to have be a sizzling for next month. Um, which, Veronica, is next month's pick. Veronica, what did you pick for next month? I picked a book off the Listopia um, on our Goodreads page called The Ghost Bride. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about this. It is yeah, by, and perfect. I apologize if I'm not going to say the author's name correctly, uh, Yangshi Chu. Um, and the, the description is, though ruled by British overlords, the Chinese of colonial Malaya, Malaya still cling to ancient customs. And in the sleepy port town of Malacca, ghosts and superstitions abound. Li Lan, the daughter of a genteel but bankrupt family, has few prospects, but fate intervenes when she receives an unusual proposal from the wealthy and powerful Lim family. They want her to become a ghost bride for the family's only son, who recently died under mysterious circumstances. Rarely practiced, a traditional ghost marriage is used to placate a restless spirit. Such a union would guarantee Li Lan a home for the rest of her days, but at a terrible price. One minute, I'll keep reading. After an ominous visit to the opulent Lim mansion, Li Lan finds herself haunted not only by her ghostly would-be suitor, but also by her desire for the Lim's handsome new heir, Tian Bai. Night after night, she is drawn into the shadowy parallel world of the Chinese afterlife with ghost cities, paper funeral offerings, vengeful spirits, and monstrous bureaucracy, <laughs> including the mysterious Er Long, a charming but unpredictable guardian spirit. Li Lan must uncover the Lim family's darkest secrets and the the truth about her own family before she is trapped in this ghostly world forever. Ooh, this sounds really good. Yeah, sounds yeah, interesting, yeah. right? Yeah, I like it. It's a different culture too, which is fun. Yeah. All right, awesome. And then um, we, it's a big shout out to Sean Luke, the Looky Look, um, <laughs> who is our moderator uh, for an organizer and sends us show notes. And he's general awesome dude. Um, he organizes rereads, so we do a reread every month. Um, and the reread for June is Silent in the Grave, A Lady Julia Gray, number one by Deanna Rayborn. If you have not read that book, it is excellent. And I yes. very, very, very suggest you get along there. Yes, and there, she's, we, I said she's also, I just, we're very good friends now. Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> and um, the alt pick is also a book I just picked, uh, I clicked on The Valiant by Leslie Livingston. And it, it looks fantastic. It's uh, a Celtic Roman um uh, warrior said uh, uh, romance. So I'm going to actually get on the oh. download of that alt book because it looks really good. Yeah. So we got a lot of good uh, books for next month. And we have Vaginal Fantasy merchandise on the Zazzle store. You can check out all the links on goodreads.com slash Vaginal Fantasy. And you can join in on the conversations. Yay. Anybody else? We're going to have to make a dick saddle shirt. <laughs> or at least yeah. at least an enamel pin. Like a yeah. Yeah. that deserves a pin of some sort. We'll figure yeah. it out. Or like, like hashtag not all nymphs or something. I don't know. We also need a cat dragon pin. I think it's yeah. a 
I don't, I, don't have, I don't think I have the right, like, I just worry about because we, I don't think we have, like, we don't have necessarily the permission for the cat dragon. So I have to figure out, like, how we have that to ask. Stuff Whoever works. Yeah. Up with the great cat dragon illustrations, hopefully we can get permission from them to use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I bet we can. I yeah. Um, I also, I just wanted to say, I posted on our social earlier, um, I wrote an article a while back about monster erotica, because it's starting to make a comeback yet again, and this article I think was in 2014, so I just wanted you to know I posted it just because, uh, since X-Files is coming back yet again, and since Twin Peaks is back, there's been a lot more Bigfoot and owl erotica on Amazon. Owl? What? Yeah, and I almost I'm I'm I might pick that for my pick at next time where it's the owls are not what they seem erotica type stuff. Yes. So just so you know, that could show up eventually. And also, I and you're welcome. Like this idea, as long as it's not so I've I've actually I've picked up some random Amazon they're, Yeah. They're, they're, they get really porny. Yeah, but, and that's those are novellas too. Like when we did Taken by T Rex. Yes. Uh, that wasn't a full novel. That was like it's I think so it, was like ni- it was like ninety, pa- eighty pages or seventy-five yeah. pages or something. Still and the- very popular. <laughs> oh, but it was really popular. So maybe I feel like all- we should one year we should all write an eighty-page novella about yes. one subject. I've- oh, were we going to do like I'll just we're that. going to do a Santa porn or something? We were each yeah. going to do a Santa. Yeah. I think we could do that. <sighs> What's your pick? We should pick a month once, yeah, one day, like, uh, once both um, Felicia and I have kids over two. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we could also write an erotica novella, all four of us, as like an exquisite corpse, where we don't read what the other person wrote. Yeah. Oh, that would be fun. That would be the last line of a paragraph. Yeah. It's kind of like weird. Bad libs type way of writing. Or like like, like the friendship bread, but, but porn. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, idea. I think it'd be hilarious. So yeah. maybe we'll do that if in all of our spare time. Yeah, in all yeah. of our spare time. All my spare time. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, you guys. We'll see you next month. And as always, go to the goodreads.com slash vaginal fantasy forum to comment on next month's book or any book. If you want to just just start a forum topic, it's there's no limit. So we'll see you there. And thanks a lot to the mods for keeping the chat clean. Thank you. Bye. Cleanish. Bye. Bye.